In this video I'll be covering off the horn blocks. As we can see they start off as a set of castings. Each one of these is a pair of horns. The initial operations are all in the mill and involve cleaning up the outside dimensions. This is all pretty mundane stuff working with a chunky end mill so I've not included any video. Once I've got the main dimensions milled, I then clamp each pair of horns directly onto the table and cut out the relief that sits up against the frame. I've got a setup on the mill table that enables me to position each set of horns into the same place and therefore eliminating the need for me to reset the DRO for each set of horns. With the frame faces milled off, it's on to drilling the holes, all 15 of them in each of the horn blocks. And again, I've set the table up to enable accurate and quick reposition of each horn block. And 90 holes later, I have the three sets of horn blocks ready to move on. I now need to drill the corresponding holes in the frames and unlike the stretches, I am going to spot through this time. To position the horns, I've rescribed the original axle centre lines back onto the frames. And I've also put a scribe line on the top centre of each of the horns. This will allow me to line them up visually, clamp them in place and then drill through. My initial intent was to do this for the first three rivets in every horn block and then move the frames onto the mill drill to drill out the remaining holes. But when I considered how many holes I had to drill through, I just carry on in the same way. Tucked away on the drawings, Don has made a note about the trailing horn blocks in that they need to be fixed to the frames with countersunk rivets. Luckily I noticed this now before I'd put all the rivets in. The interesting thing about that note is it relates to a guard for the trailing axle, which fits around the horns and sits down over the inside face of the horns here, which is why these horns need to be riveted with countersunk rivets from the inside. Although it doesn't really jump out on the drawings, the guard is actually secure to both the front and the back sides of these horns. So I remove them to replace the rivets and whilst they're off, I drill and tap four 6PA holes in the front and back of each horn. This seems like a sensible opportunity to make the guard for the trailing axles. So I grab some 1.6mm sheet steel cut and file the outline and then with a bit of help from some G-clamps, the vise and some hammers, I bend it to shape. The section in the middle needs to be filled in, so I also cut out a small piece, bend that to shape and then use my preferred approach of TIG welding to fix it in place. As I explained in a previous video, my TIG skills are rudimentary at best. So after welding the plate in place, I thoroughly clean up all the joints, so unfortunately there's no nice bead visible. With the axle guard out of the way, I can get back into the wonderful world of riveting. For the trailing horns, I'm only going to countersink these rivets at the top. The lower ones will not foul the guard so they can stay as normal round head. The countersunk rivets I've got are quite shallow in terms of their head. So I just put a small countersink in each of the relevant holes and then get back on with the riveting and filing. Okay, I'm pleased to say that all six horns are now riveted into the frames. As we can see, I was a bit heavy with the hammer on this side in particular. So a few things that I could really have done without. There is a bit of rock in the frames. They do need to be loosened up and then everything tightened. All the stretches are only in loose at this point. And I think the frames have bowed a little bit with all the work that's gone into them. So I may have to use a bit of brute force to try and straighten them out, but we'll see how bad they are. The next operation now is to properly open up the horn blocks to accept the axle boxes, which we've yet to make. When I made the frames, I actually cut the slots for the axles to the design size or thereabouts three quarters of an inch so I opened these up to 19 mil. That was a bit premature I should have done that at this stage with the horn blocks in position so what I'll do is I'll open up slightly further probably to 19 and a half mil. 
I need to make a decision as to how I want to open those horn blocks out. A common approach is to strip the frames down again so that we're not assembled like I've got it here and put the frames together face to face, square them up or align them and then run through the horn block openings with a mill with that pair together. What I'm minded to do is actually machine them in situ. So come to an arrangement where the frames are aligned, properly set up and then held squarely in the frame and then making sure that I've got enough support on both sides is running them mill side to side, thus ensuring that the horn internal dimensions are square and aligned. But for this video, we'll wrap up now. I'll come back to the machining of the horn blocks for the axle blocks in the next video. Thanks for watching.